So I've been back from Italy already a few days now. I wanted to record this video as soon as possible to get my fresh thoughts after coming back. And something that's actually been really on my mind is how I've been talking about over the past few months that i am not really been sure if Portugal is really the place to be anymore. I mean, it is a wonderful place, but after this trip, I can really say that maybe my original thoughts have kind of been reinforced and I love it. I think it's amazing, but when comparing it with Italy, it just ain't Italy. I'm Rafael Di Furia. Welcome back to another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter and roll that intro. So one of the most important things that anybody really thinks about when they are thinking about moving to another part of the world will be the cost of living. And I can say that the cost of a lot of things in Italy will definitely be a lot more. Some of the things that I was seeing there were as much as double or triple of what I was seeing here. It really depended on what we're talking about. Some things were on par. Uh, maybe let's say, for example, an Uber getting around. This is one big difference actually between life here in Portugal and life in Italy, Uber is just something that really doesn't exist. Granted, as I was rightly corrected in the comments uh, in a previous episode where I recently mentioned this, that there is a form of Uber in Rome that works with the taxi system, but it's not Uber Uber. <laughs> That sounds like a weird thing to say anyway. Uh, there are some cities where you can find taxi apps, where you can hail a taxi and be able to get your ride to come to you, but you won't necessarily see a preview of how much that trip will cost. I personally do enjoy that small factor. And also, I'm somebody who doesn't drive. I have no real interest in getting a license or getting a car. And so for me, it's proven to be something that actually has created the feeling of a little bit more freedom to be able to get around and not just have to rely on public transportation only, but for those times that I need to be able to get around when I need to be able to get from place to place, then it's actually a more interesting option. And of course, we have to talk about the cost of those rides. That's something that's really going to depend on where you find yourself. For example, I mean, here in Portugal, not just getting around by Uber, but having the prices be really cheap. I know I mentioned this in a lot of episodes, but there are certain things that stand out to me and there are going to be other things that stand out to other people. This is one of those things, being able to get around cost of transportation and I was seeing for the rides that I was having to take in Italy, like not only was it inconvenient because I had to wait at a taxi circle for a taxi that maybe was or wasn't going to show up and have to wait in a line of people to wait for that taxi. And so when the one taxi that comes by every five minutes or so shows up, finally, it's not even a taxi for you. Uh, let's say the rides were maybe again, double or triple of what I was seeing here in Portugal for similar kind of distance, not the exact same, but we'll say roughly similar. Then of course, I mean, talking about food, we're seeing things maybe getting a little bit closer in price there. But of course, when we're talking about things at like a bakery or whatever, then we're talking about things that are going to be pretty on par. But if we're talking about also electronics, those are going to be things that are generally speaking on par, although I have seen better pricing online. So these days, whether you're buying it in person or online, that's going to be the bigger difference than what part of Europe you're going to be purchasing it from, because there are going to be some websites that you can purchase from another country in Europe and have a better option for pricing. Uh, the shipping might be a little bit more, but sometimes you could find that the pricing could be just a little bit lower, that the cost of shipping doesn't actually really make a difference and it could still be a lot less expensive. But then when it comes to apartments, of course, it's going to depend on city, countryside, towns, all of that stuff. And like I mentioned in last week's episode, when I was back in Rovigo, my little hometown, my little Italian hometown, I was really surprised about the quality of Italian food. I mean, we all know, I don't know how this is something that actually escaped me because thinking about it, it really doesn't make sense that like I could forget something like that. Me, the guy who's always talking about food in all of these episodes of Not Your Average Globetrotter. Really, there's something about the way that things are made there, the simplicity of certain dishes, uh, quality of meat, quality of whatever it may be. I hate to say, but it kind of feels like it might stand a little bit above what you can find here at times. I also don't want to be misunderstood. I really do enjoy being there and I really do enjoy being here. So for example, if you could take Portuguese weather, 
but put at in Italy and then take certain things about life here, like how simplistic they can be or even the lack of bureaucracy in comparison to Italy. And I definitely realize that for a lot of expats they, that are coming from North America and maybe haven't been so used to the bureaucracy in other parts of the world that what you might experience here will be more than what you've experienced back in another part of the world. For me, having moved from Italy to Portugal, some things are just a little bit more simplified, a little bit more straightforward. And so I will say from that perspective, that's actually one thing that Portugal really does have over Italy. But then we also have to think about lifestyle and that's a big one because lifestyle is the biggest reason why anybody is gonna think about moving to the other side of the world. And there are certain things that I was thinking may be more similar. But overall, when it comes down to it, a lot of things are very, very different. And even if you might find that you can move to a village somewhere, slow down, take it easy, chill, relax, the flavor that you're able to do that with, for lack of a better way of being able to put it, is going to have a different taste. You're going to have just a different experience in each country. And I know that a lot of people who are thinking about moving to Italy are thinking about Portugal. And a lot of people who are thinking about moving to Portugal have thought about Italy. Why? Because of the cost of living differences and also similarities somewhat in climate. Although I will say, I still do prefer how things are here in Portugal. To me, the air generally feels a little bit fresher here, uh, a little bit more of a breeze. It depends, of course, on where you're coming from, but having a smoggy sky over Southern Europe is generally speaking not that uncommon at least from kind of Spain onwards but here in Portugal I feel like there are more times that I can see a clear blue sky even if today it's maybe a little bit more milky but then of course I mean there's another factor that comes into lifestyle and I know there are a lot of Italian dual citizens who are watching these episodes maybe not all of you but I know it's going to be on the minds of some of you and while there may be slight differences and a lot of similarities on a day-to-day -day basis. You're not going to functionally notice a ton of things that are gonna be so vastly different from one another. However, when it comes to interacting with certain systems and when it comes to maybe say, if you are retired or at least if you're of that age, even if you aren't retired, and then maybe you have to interact with the healthcare system. There are going to be certain benefits to dealing with the healthcare system in Italy as an Italian citizen. There are going to be certain things that you just don't have to pay for, certain tests, certain whatever it may be. Whereas in Portugal, you may actually have to go ahead and pay for the exact, the exact, exact same thing. You could find though that some medications in Portugal generally speaking, could be a little less expensive, even if you would have to purchase it there or here. But overall, I feel like dealing with the medical systems, it doesn't even out, but it gets really close. But I would give the slight edge to Italy yet again, even if it's maybe more of like a very minor thing when it comes to lifestyle, but being able to shop for clothes, if you are not within the kind of normal body type of what is found here in Portugal. Shopping for clothing here can be a little bit of a challenge at times. I mean, especially for me, I'm not a short guy and I've got pretty wide shoulders. And so actually for the past few years, I've been trying to find a suit. It's been very difficult. I've looked at cheap suits. I've looked at expensive suits. And unless I were to get something custom tailored, which would be an absurd price, then it ends up that kind of is the only option, but even then, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like how the suit comes out because I can't try on anything that's within the same kind of realm that I could get an idea of how it's going to look or not. But when I was in Italy, I found a suit, 99 euros, and it was actually pretty decent. And without having to get it tailored, well, not really, at least, um, I'll have to get the, sh the uh, pants uh, actually shortened a little bit, but basically overall, other than the length of the pants, that thing is going to have to really be altered. Um, so to be able to just pick something up off the rack for me is quite the experience. And I've had my issues with shopping in Italy as well. It's not perfect there, but there are some little differences like that. I would say if your body type is a little bit, maybe slightly on the smaller side, petite, that you will have an easier time finding things. If you are someone who is a little bit larger, then it could prove tricky here. 
in Portugal. And I'm not saying that in this video, these are the reasons you should or you shouldn't move, but these are some little things that stood out to me. I mean, I was noticing like little things all over the place. I mean, for example, one of the smallest things that I was noticing while I was in Italy, was the music being played on the radio, some of the same music that I was hearing when I was living there before. I feel like wherever you go, there's kind of just a playlist that's always on, that it's the same 20 pop songs that you hear in every store or on the radio, in a supermarket or uh, on the bus, whatever it might be. And depending on what country you're in, that playlist may differ slightly. And between here and there, yeah, there were some songs that I hadn't heard for a while. And I'm not talking about even specifically Italian songs or Portuguese songs. I'm talking about like just pop songs that were getting more play when I was walking around there than I would expect to even hear here. Of course, another minor factor that I often mention in my videos is the cost of data and phones. I mean, for me, as someone who works online and needs to be connected, this actually ends up being a very important detail. And uh, by the way, if you are ever here in Braga, come to this place for gelato. Very good, like actually Italian style. Maybe you've seen me post on Instagram about it. But for what I might pay here in Portugal, for say like between 10 and 30 gigabytes with maybe a few hundred to a few thousand minutes would cost me as much as unlimited minutes, unlimited text, and maybe a few hundred gigabytes worth of data in Italy. And actually even in Italy it might cost less <laughs> for the, the tiers of packages than what you might find here in Portugal. I mean, when you're operating either your own business or you're operating as a, someone working remotely, these factors end up building up on top of each other. And even the prices that you are seeing for home internet were also less expensive in Italy. And in some cases, the offers being made were, I would say, even a little bit better, a little bit faster than what you're finding here. Now you're starting to find better packages available here in Portugal as well but also it's going to depend on if you're in a city, if you're in the country, if you're in a newer building, if you're older building, what kind of wiring the building has. Do you have copper wiring or do you have fiber that comes all the way to your door? I mean, this is all going to be different depending on where you find yourself, regardless of which country you're in. And then of course there are other things. I mean, the way that people carry themselves in Italy, there's something a little bit different about it. The way that the food is presented, the way that the windows are dressed in shops, there's something uniquely Italian that we don't find anywhere else, and it doesn't matter what part of the country you're in. Even if you find differences in quality or difference in whatever it may be, there is something across the nation that is unique to that nation. I'm not saying that it's better or worse than Portugal, it's just different. And I would say overall, there are going to be many things that expats are looking for, that people who are looking to maybe even have their first experience abroad might actually be looking for more in Italy than they might be able to find in Portugal. Again, I don't want to sound like I'm hating on Portugal. I really do enjoy it here and I really do personally like it here, but I do happen to know a lot of individuals who are living here that it's just really not the right choice for. And I feel as though in my time abroad of the different countries that I've lived in, in the different places, the people who end up being happier and unhappy, I feel as though I've known a lot more people who've come to Portugal and have been really, really disappointed by it than maybe any other place. And I think it may largely have to do with how it's presented in the media and how it's presented online. Of course, so many projects online, whether they're news stories or they're bloggers, vloggers, whatever, end up just talking about how, oh my gosh, pastel de nata, everything is so wonderful, so amazing, so delicious, everything is perfect, rainbows, unicorns, and butterflies. And I mean, in Italy, I've called it pizza, pasta, and amore for years, and it exists. It exists in both places that people talk and oversell and overhype these places. But the experience that you're actually going to have on a day-to-day -day basis, I find that there are a lot more people who end up being able to tolerate what they experience in Italy than what they experience here in Portugal. Granted, for me, again, when we're talking about functionally things on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not going to say that there's such a massive difference between what you're going to experience here and what you're going to experience there. Are there differences? Yes. But when you're just going about your daily routine, you're just going to experience what's happening to you in a store, walking down the street, uh, bikes, 
ringing their bells at you or scooters in this case. And actually there's been a question that popped up in a few comments in, on my social media as well as in private messages to me. Are you staying in Italy? Are you living in Italy? What's going on? And the answer, I think I maybe said it best in my last video when I was in Rovigo, but I'm here in Portugal. I'm living here. Like this is where I find myself. But for people who are maybe thinking about moving abroad for the first time, especially when we're talking about, like, as I've mentioned in so many different episodes, cost of living going up in Portugal, taxes changing their situation and other various factors that have also started really changing the feeling of Portugal. Even though, granted, you are seeing over-tourism and it's a problem that's really making a mark on so many different places. So, can I say either are perfect? No, I'm going to say that there are going to be some real serious considerations that you want to make regardless of what country you're moving to. If we're saying, should you move abroad, period, I'm going to say for most people, no, they shouldn't move abroad that a vacation is actually going to be much more enjoyable, maybe once a year or once every five years, rather than actually making a life on the other side of the world. I mean, say for example, you're retiring and you've got kids and you've got grandkids. How often are you gonna be able to see those grandkids? How often are you going to, say if you're maybe closer to my age, how often are you going to be able to get to see your parents, your brothers, sisters, whoever, your friends? These are all factors that become very difficult on the other side of the world. Granted, can you make new friends? most definitely but you can't make new family well maybe you can make new family but that's a different topic for a different day i would say maybe a much longer and more difficult process doable but whatever not for this episode i will say i mean even i've come to find that there are certain foods that i've really been missing again bringing it back to food this is what we're talking about and not your average globe trotter we have to focus on what is important the core issues of living abroad and I mean, for me, I'm a big fan of steak tartare and also carpaccio. And carpaccio and steak tartare, raw beef, I realize they're not for everybody. I personally enjoy them, but being able to find them here has been almost impossible. I have seen carpaccio di bresaola, cured meat carpaccio, but it's just not the same. There's something special. It's like being served prosciutto when you want steak. I mean, almost literally, that's what it is. And for me, that's something I really, really missed. And I was so happy to be able to get some, uh, some steak tartare when I was in Italy, but I couldn't find the carpaccio. That one's not so common that you find everywhere. But again, you don't see those things here. Granted, do you see other things here? Most definitely. You have a lot of really fun Portuguese dishes that I personally like. But when we're talking about food, about the amount of people who... I've noticed over the years have a preference for one or the other. I've seen many more people being happy with Italian cuisine than Portuguese cuisine. Do you find things that are agreeable to a lot of people here? Yes. Do you find things that are a lot agreeable to a lot of people there? Most definitely. But overall, I can say just among the people who I've known over the years, I've known many more foreign residents of a country who have been more happy in Italy than here. I can't even count the number of conversations that I've had here where people just said they really don't like the food here. Again, there are many things that I like here, but <laughs> I've realized they're also not for everybody as well. But anyway, as always, as a happy resident of this city, Braga, Portugal, coming to you again for another Friday night, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there. Thank you so much for joining me again for this episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter, and I'll see you all next time. Later. 